How do we collaborate? How will we collaborate in the future? 2020 has so far shown that the future of collaboration will look far different than it did just one year ago. The explosion of remote work and video conferencing as a result of COVID-19 has demanded employers to fully shift their workforces online. Now, this has become the new normal, but where will it lead? In this series, I take the most mundane, overlooked, or just plain obvious everyday things that we take for granted in our modern world. I break them down, look at them from the big picture, and share their fascinating significance for us humans. In this two-part episode, let's talk about the future of collaboration. The modern economy has been testing remote work long before 2020. As connective capacities and computational availability increased in the past few decades, ingenious firms started to enable segments of their workforce to work and contribute from the comfort of their homes. As such, video conferencing such as Zoom or collaboration platforms such as Slack have become mainstays of the modern economy. Yet, as increasing shares of the workforce are pushed to interact with these digital tools, Newfound questions have emerged regarding the collaborative limitations of a digitally connected workforce separated by a computer screen. In short, screen-to-screen -screen collaboration just feels off. But why? Well, the answer is body language. Body language is the underlying universal codex we use to transcend the spoken word, but it becomes gray and muddied by our computer screens. Video conferencing enables participants to catch a glimpse of body language, but it nevertheless obstructs the full picture. We express body language not just through our face, but also through our arms, our hands, our gestures, and our stances. Prominent psychologist Jeffrey Beatty poetically illustrates that the movements of our hands and arms are the windows into the human mind. They make thought visible. Yet, when we communicate through video conferencing software, we notoriously keep our hands to our sides, use them to type notes, or hold the camera far too close to our face, all of which undermine our subconscious understanding of body language. This is, of course, why we often feel face-to-face -face encounters to be necessary to close deals, communicate honestly, or brainstorm. There is something spectacular about physically engaging with others in a three-dimensional space. It exploits the natural conveyance of body language to reach into the core of our creative capacities and extract novel ideas or catalyze internal paradigm shifts. We are, after all, social animals, and humanity is, by and large, where it is today, thanks to the collaborative potential of our species. Yet, computer screens erect narrow, opaque windows that severely undermine these capacities. What we need are digital tools that enable a clearer, more detailed look into the body language of our collaborators. You could say we need a wider digital aperture. So what is the solution? Given the big picture of digitalization, the workforce of the future will almost certainly utilize digital collaboration tools even more so than we do today. And the solution may already be here, in the budding augmented reality or virtual reality startups that we see sprinkled across the globe. Neatly put, augmented reality is the layering of digital elements on top of the real world, while virtual reality is the creation of entirely virtual three-dimensional spaces. In terms of digital collaboration, augmented reality startups are already building devices which can project holograms of coworker avatars into a single real-world shared office space. Meanwhile, virtual reality startups are developing entirely digital 3D workspaces for avatars to meet, work, and collaborate within. Perhaps these innovations in augmented reality and virtual reality could provide promising solutions to widen the digital aperture of body language communication. Or, perhaps, we may continue to develop ever more elaborate and dynamic screen-to-screen -screen collaboration tools to overcome such challenges. So, which will it be? 
What path forward will the global workforce take in the coming decades as these technologies mature or technologists invent increasingly creative applications? Well, virtual reality collaboration could prove to be the most immersive, but it runs the risk of novel machine-human interface problems. Likewise, augmented reality collaboration may keep users grounded in reality, but could prove difficult to master real-world interfacing. Lastly, screen-to-screen -screen collaboration would be the most seamless extension of what we are used to today, but it naturally limits the scope of the digital aperture. Now, the most likely scenario will be a combination of all three, but surely one will come to be the preferred method of digital collaboration. In the second part, we will explore the factors that will likely influence the trajectory we take and share our thoughts on the most likely future scenario. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you. Please like and subscribe for more big picture perspectives. Just remember to stay curious. See you next time.